<laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Muko's Corner, where we talk about tech and stuff, I guess. I don't know, I just made this set and I thought it looked really nice and I feel like maybe it deserved its own series name or something. Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you are well. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. Today I wanted to talk about personal projects. Personal coding projects, coding projects, personal coding things. Today I wanted to talk about personal projects in software engineering. So I'm putting on an event in October where everybody works on their personal projects called Code with Friends, link in bio. And so I wanted to make a video today about why I think personal projects are really important as well as some of my tips and tricks for working on them. And I thought it would be cool to talk about personal projects by like working on a personal project at the same time because I thought that could be kind of meta. And instead of coding because that gets kind of complicated and then I have to debug and then I'll lose focus, I thought I could work on a Lego project. Um, the pieces in here are super random and I actually don't know what I'm going to make, but at the end of this there will be a project, like a Lego project that I finish while I talk about personal projects and also enjoy my morning cup of coffee. So without further ado, let's talk about why personal projects are important. When we're first learning about programming, we oftentimes turn to tutorials and different blog posts and stuff for getting our feet wet with coding, which is great. But the best way to actually build your skills in coding is to work on your own project because tutorials are really nice and all and they tell you exactly what to do to get to you know an actual product. But doing something from scratch that doesn't have any sort of tutorials or guides builds really important skills to become a seasoned software engineer. And it's things like being able to read documentation, debugging errors, as well as a skill to actually figure out how something really works. Because in industry, no one ever really tells you exactly how to build the thing. They just kind of expect you to be able to build it. So learning those skills are really just an integral part to becoming a good software engineer. Another reason for why personal projects are really important is because it's a great way to learn a technology that maybe you've always wanted to learn before. Like maybe you want to become like a front end engineer, but you don't really quite know the difference between React and Vue, for instance. So one thing that you might work on is work on a project that just uses Vue and then work on a project that just uses React and see how they compare. Which piece is supposed to make these wheels work? Like for real, huh. for real? For wheel? <laughs> For wheels? And when you're gonna start learning something new, then always start with the basics or the foundations of code or whatever you need to know. Although it's a common thing to get stuck in tutorial land, it is a good place to just at least start to learn and grasp the concepts of everything. So knowing things like logic, algorithms, and data structures are really important, which is where I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. They're a website that has a bunch of courses in the sciences. Their courses are all interactive, and so they're really great for learning those really important fundamentals and foundations to build those computer science skills on top. So go to brilliant.org slash Mayuko and sign up for free. And the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring, and now let's get back to this thing. So yeah, the tutorials are really important, but also you do have to move past the tutorials and actually use those skills in the real world. Because that's where you get to like play with the technology and kind of explore different capabilities, which then is exactly how you build the skills that you can put on your resume, for example. And in kind of like a job hunting perspective, personal projects are a great way to prove that you can provide value. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these wheels. I just don't know how to use them. See, if I'm gonna make a car for a personal project, then it might've been good to actually explore what's in the box first so that I know exactly how these wheels work. But you know, that's the other thing. You don't know exactly how things are gonna work until you actually explore and try to figure it out on your own. Because if I did have like a tutorial thing, it would make this immensely easier. But I'm not gonna because I'm trying to build the real Lego skills here today. And then will this fit right here? <gasps> Ta-da! I've got wheels. Parkour, parkour. Oh, that kind of worked. So anyways, back to my job hunting point. 
If you actually work on an app that has real users, then it's a really clear way to show to employers that what you make, like the coding skills that you use, can be translated into real value. Which really, that's what companies are evaluating for when you're especially going for those interviews. Like even if the only real user is you, like maybe you really needed something and you just built it quickly because it filled a hole in your life. Like that's also a great way to demonstrate that you can use your coding skills for something that provides value into the world. And I think it's also because it's very different to build something just for the sake of building it versus building something that really has value that someone is gonna use. Because when you build something that someone's gonna use, you're gonna make sure it's like good quality. Like when a user's actually using it, you have to make sure that it works pretty well, like most of the time, and that there aren't any bugs, and that it's easy to use, and it behaves in a way that the user expects. I gotta make a move on with these wheels. I'm just like stuck. I have so many different like wheel parts and I don't know what to do with them. With the pieces that I have, I don't actually know if I can build anything meaningful on wheels. Okay, you know what I am gonna do? There's this little train right here that is on the box and I'm gonna try making kind of like this thing because this part looks kind of too hard so I'm just gonna make this like back half of things. So in making a personal project, it also helps in the job hunt in that you can show what your interest is to recruiters and other software engineers. Because if you work on like the same tutorial that everybody else is working on, then it doesn't really show like who you are or what your interests are or like what kind of problems you like solving. But if you do show people like, hey, I'm really into gaming or like I'm really into like bio and medicine and specifically about cancer research, then you're just gonna stand out way more amongst other applicants who've all done kind of the same projects. I know that when I was on kind of like the hiring side of things and I was looking at resumes for a job opening, then seeing that someone worked on a tool for like their community or something that really helped them in their day-to-day -day life or you know, helped another, like just like one other person really stood out to me way more. Because I think it demonstrates like a fundamental skill of caring for others and being able to empathize with the user and creating something that you could be proud of and that people would find useful. What does this look like? Oh, it's supposed to be like three? How, where am I supposed to find a piece like that though? How does that work? So those are all the reasons why I think personal projects can be really valuable and really important. So now let's dive into my tips. So when you're working on personal projects, the most important thing to remember is that Rome was not built in a day. Like as much as you wanna be ambitious and build like the next big thing on the internet, I think you also have to be a little realistic. Like the websites and apps that we use every day take months, even years to create them. And if you're going to work on a really huge project, especially just by yourself, then it is really easy to get demotivated just by the pure amount of work there is to do. So what can be done about this? Keep your personal projects really, really small. Like I think you can definitely start off by dreaming big about your project, but you definitely then wanna scale down the feature set or the capabilities to something that is the minimum viable product or MVP. Literally create a list of all the things that this thing is supposed to do and then separate the need to haves and the nice to haves. Like if you're building an app that's supposed to show the air quality index for a given area, then you might want the app to show the air quality index number and then be able to enter in a zip code, for example. But it probably doesn't need to show like all the rest of the weather conditions or the 10 day forecast for that area too. And the best part about doing this is that once you've built your MVP, you don't have to say goodbye to the nice to haves. Cause once you have that solid like working bit of stuff, then you can iterate on it and add those nice to haves back in to create a really compelling project. So like now maybe you have a list of things that are like the absolutely need to have. How do you actually go about building it? Well, my tip is to do a bit of project planning because again, this has a lot to do with making sure that you keep up your motivation and you have momentum. So once you have your must have tasks, then I really recommend going through and estimating how long or how complex something is to build. Now this part's really tricky because we as humans are terrible at estimating and in reality, we don't know how long something is gonna take until we've done it. And because you and I are probably not time travelers, we really just only have our best guess. So yeah, just use clues that maybe you already have, like for instance, how long did it take you to build something similar before? And honestly, a rule of thumb that I like to follow is to take the number that you have, whether that be hours or days or weeks, or maybe complexity, 
double it and then add one. I know it kind of seems like overkill, like that really inflates the number to something huge, but because again, we're really bad at estimating things, it gives us a little bit of flexibility for when something goes wrong or maybe we've misestimated something. And I always think it's better to under promise and over deliver. So if you end up not taking that much time, then great, you're ahead of the game. So after you've estimated everything, I really recommend laying out your development into phases. So whether you organize your tasks into, this is what I'm doing this week, this is what I'm doing next week, and the rest of this is for next month, now you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing at any given time. Because then all of a sudden, this mountain of work that we had feels a little bit more manageable because you have a ton of tiny little steps to get to where you wanna go. And it's okay if the deadline slips, like we're all human, like it's not a big deal. Like I thought I was gonna be done with this Lego piece a lot sooner, but you know what? We're here and I'm still doing it but it's coming together pretty good, I would say. It's, it's, it's getting there. Now my last tip for working on a personal project is to use version control. Now I'm guessing a lot of y'all are probably gonna work on your projects just by yourself. Say so you're thinking like, well, Hugo, why do I need version control, especially if I'm not working on it with other people? Well, you are gonna work on it with yourself and previous versions of yourself. So version control is really there to help you from yourself. Oh, and if you're not familiar with how version control or Git works, then I did a video with Microsoft a while ago to talk about Git workflows to give you a brief overview. So because version control allows you to have like a history of the things that you did, and it's basically just kind of a log, you can basically undo any mistakes that you make, which if you're working on a personal project, especially with something that doesn't have a spec or a tutorial, or especially if you're working on a new technology for the first time, it's really important because everybody makes mistakes and projects don't always turn out to be how you want them to be. And so being able to undo those things to a previous clean version is gonna save you a lot of headache. I know it's helped me a lot in the past because I'll get to a point where I'm just like, I have completely ruined this project and there's a point of no return. And then just being able to like go back to a previous commit and just undo all of that and start fresh is just like, it's a relieving feeling. Okay, so I'm gonna finish my little project here because I'm like nearly done and I feel pretty good about it. And I think it's very close. Scott, can you help me look for a three? A three? Yeah, I need something that looks like this, but it's three. I guess threes don't exist in my go world. This is something that I've learned by not using a tutorial, but actually just working on things by myself. Yeah, I did it. Here's my completed product, everybody. It's got a lot of windows. It's got wheels. Doo -doo. Yay. Yay, personal project done. And this is because I decided to be realistic about what I can make, still run up into issues, didn't use a tutorial. All right, everybody, I hope you like this video about coding and personal projects and Muko's Corner, where she plays with Legos and explains something about software engineering. If you like this video, then make sure to subscribe. I make videos about tech and career and lifestyle and stuff. And let me know what tips you have for working on personal projects in the comments down below. I'll see you next time and take care, everybody. Bye.